and then really really quickly let's go ahead and just set up our water so water's gonna come out and it's just gonna go pow 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 and there we go and we'll go ahead and set this so it can extract that way it can start filling these up and I may find myself needing a different uh, piping system or some uh, better conduits maybe I don't know we'll see but for right now that'll be good once we upgrade this, we'll be at the point where we can start mass producing ender fluid conduits. So, um, and then as far as item conduits, what we're going to do is we're going to have a conduit line here, then a conduit line that runs up right there, and we're going to just bring this around like that. It's kind of similar to how we had it before, um, in truth. And then we'll have that come up, and it's going to kind of come over here and that's where the autoclave is going to be. Blast furnace will be setting, this will be, this will have painting machine block right there and then blast furnace sitting right there. Um, let me grab some stone or cobblestone real quick. And this is just to basically mark off where walls are going to be so I can kind of get a general idea. I'll be building um, in here probably between episodes I think. But that's basically where the wall is going to be and then we'll have, um, you know, this will be kind of where the blast furnace sits and then that and then right here is actually I placed that stone there that's where the wall is going to be between this room and the next room so uh, where the blast furnace comes out and then it'll kind of uh, there'll be like a one block space here and that's perfect that's what we're going to be using um, right here um, okay so then what we'll do is we'll have um, these conduits just go under the floor right here they'll just travel down underneath here. They'll also connect up to the blast furnace from the bottom as well and they'll actually come up right here because this will be a painted block um, facade that sits here just to kind of shape this into the wall and uh, it's going to come straight up actually pretty tall and this is where the whole buffer system is going to sit I can't do that and we'll actually have it go um, we'll actually have it go into the wall right here and then um, it's gonna come back along like that and this thing needs to be moved all right so this is where the buffer system is going to sit and what we're going to have is we've got a few different chests that need to be plugged up let me actually pull this back a block. I don't know why I brought it up right there because I don't really have to use a painted block there if I do it like this. So anyways it's going to be that's where it's going to kind of connect into the wall and these conduit lines going to come out right here and it's going to come out just the full length of this like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up chests. We're going to have uh, one, two, three, four, four, five maybe Yeah, we'll go ahead and do five, six for the autoclave. Um, we're going to do four chests for right now. And then this modular storage. Let me actually grab this modular storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to have um, chest. And I'm actually going to make chest upgrades. And we're just going to upgrade these to like diamond chests later. Uh, maybe between episodes or something. Oh, wait. I'm going to need... Uh... Well, I could either do a trap chest or... It's going to be diamond chests, so let me just go ahead and upgrade a couple of these to iron chests. Because once they're diamond chests, they won't connect. So the iron chest, I think it's just iron, um, yeah, iron plates around wood. Okay, let me order 16 iron plates. This system is going to be a lot more intelligent um, with the way that it operates. It'll never run the risk of getting backed up, you know, like... Um, with the other one, it worked really, really well. I mean, I've been using it this whole time, and I mean, there were small issues, especially once the uh, robot arm started backing up or stopping um, on server restarts. And apparently that is fixed in the most recent version of Greg Tech, just Interactions isn't running the most recent version of Greg Tech. And uh, we might as well just go ahead and fix it for the long term. So uh, we'll have like that, and then I just need the upgrades. But this system will be nice because it will not uh, run the risk of even being able to back up under, should be under any circumstances. So, 
and it's going to support um, once we add it intelligent control for blast furnace stuff and autoclave stuff and it'll also support things like um, there's nothing that comes to mind at the moment that we need to do it for but if you recall I was actually running gallium by changing it processing before um, to a couple different things since I wasn't running a lot of zinc gallium will come passively from the macerator and from the ore washer uh, while running zinc but if if there's any ores that we want to change the processing lines from so maybe it goes macerator macerator centrifuge furnace or or even macerator washing plant centrifuge furnace or something like that we can do that through this system and it won't uh, it won't run the risk of oh well it accidentally ran through here or anything like that because it all runs off of memory chests and separate channels through the conduits so uh, but anyways we're gonna have this here this is gonna be buffers and let me go grab um, a couple signs we're gonna label all this so it's all nicely labeled And of course, signs would be a goofy, <laughs> a goofy recipe. All right, we might make some fancier signs later, but right now, uh, this is convenient, and uh, that way we can label everything, so it's easy to keep up with what everything is. So this right here, we're just going to mark this as ore. That's where ore comes in. Uh, this one is going to be. Um, we're going to call this post macerate number one and then we're going to call this one post macerate number two I might make these a little bit fancier later on but this is just for reference so or post macerate one post macerate two and then we've got um, post washing and we have post centrifuge Okay, so these are basically going to act as um, overstock because there was a lot of times whenever I was running stuff, I didn't have any buffers. So what would happen is the uh, the macerator would be the point where basically stuff would start filling up, um, you know, because the electric furnace wasn't running it fast enough or the packer couldn't send it or packer got backed up and then uh, nuggets and, and things, I don't know, it would just back up in general, okay? And so this is going to act as kind of a buffer. So everything is going to get sent here. Once it's done running through a machine, it's not just going to move on to the next machine. It's going to come into here, set here until one of these machines have space, and then it's going to request it and send it over, right? Um, so that's that. And then what we need to do is we have to set up uh, memory chest lines. And basically, whenever the stuff goes through the post lines, then it's going to get checked into memory chest, which tell it, what machine it goes to next okay so we're going to have um, how do I want to set this up because I'm also gonna have the arcane crafters actually what I'll probably do is um, we'll go one two three four five um, six seven eight and uh, oh yeah and these let me grab let me just empty this for right now okay there's gonna be nine memory chests sitting here and these things it's gonna be a lot longer to set things up initially and have them set up but uh, it's gonna be like I said it's gonna be a whole lot more intelligent and everything is gonna be very controlled um, within this but this will be the last time that we overhaul the ore processing system because after this, I mean, we might upgrade some of this to EV, but uh, the machines and the placement and the conduits and the chests, everything will stay the same. And, of course, we're going to add stuff to this because we're going to start making clumps and doing chickens and all that stuff. But for the general ore burning and macerating, all that's going to stay here and stay the same. So now we're going to label these chests off, and we're going to have uh, this one we're going to call um, dust compression. Yeah, we'll have it here, I think. I think it's going to look pretty cool. So dust compression there, and then right here we're going to have um, nugget compression, or nugget compress, that works. Um, and then we're going to have, let's see, actually I don't think I need nine of these. That's fine. Uh, we might use nine. And then we're going to call this one 
autoclave in, which we won't be using that one today, but um, whenever I do set that up, it's going to be the same process. Um, and then this one we're going to call blast furnacing in. And then let's see, we've got or um, we're going to call this one to wash. We're going to call this one to centrifuge. We're going to have to macerate number two to smelt. Let me actually just switch these up to smelt. Okay, so that's what that's what we've got. So we've got post macerate, post macerate, or post wash, post centrifuge, and then to macerate, to macerate, to smelt, to wash, to centrifuge. Autoclave in, dust compression, nugget compression, blast furnace in. And that's the memory chest right now. Now, eventually, we might have a few more. And I've got space here for um, seven more if we wanted to, to kind of fill this in. Um, technically, I could even add five more along the top if I really, really wanted to. But uh, I don't think we will. But if we do, we, we will we'll have space. So um, now what we need to do is I've got these nuggets here. I'm going to go ahead, the nugget compress. Um, what I have to do, and I'm actually just going to do this off camera, I actually need to go through all of these and just lock them in like this so that nothing can come in here. So give me just a minute. This is going to take a little while. Okay, those are all, I've set all the memory chests to basically a locked state. And I'm going to go ahead and add these four nuggets because we know that we're going to be running those. Also, all of these dust can go in there. I'll do that off camera though um, because it's going to take a second. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, we have to configure all of these conduits. So the ore from here, um, which actually, let me pop up here. I need to run conduits behind all of these memory chests as well, just like that. And then the ore line, um, I'm actually not going to set that one just yet because it's going to start running things. Um, what we should do is the macerator, we're going to say that you can insert, and I've got to see what colors am I using. I think it's just uh, cyan, white, and black, um, which all of this stuff's going to change up a little bit, but yeah, cyan, white, and black uh, is what I'm using. So, But that stuff, I'm going to change that probably, maybe so. Um, I'm actually not even using the white line, so I am going to pull the white channel extract completely out. But, um, but anyways, the mass rider, what we're going to do is we're going to say that you can insert on the green line, you can extract on the brown line. And we're going to go ahead and say always active. And then what we're going to do is um, over here, let's see, to macerate one is the first line. I could actually pull up uh, that and that. Uh, two macerate is right here, so we're going to say that the two macerate chest can extract always active. Okay, um, and it's going to pull out on the green line, and then the macerator, whenever it sends its items out on the brown line, it's going to go into the post macerator chest, which is right here. So we're going to say that you can insert on the brown line, and then um, I should have, yeah, I should have enough lines for this. Actually what I'm probably going to do for the or or the input system is whenever things get done it's going to send to a chest over here and then get filtered um, just on a separate conduit line. So this whole conduit line is just going to be this over here because this is actually going to be a lot of channels uh, that this will be using once it's all said and done. So I'm going to I'm going to set it up with that in mind and so yeah I'm not going to connect this to the output just yet. Let's post macerate and um, right now that's extracting on the green channel, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to red. And red is going to be our general extract line. Okay, so brown inserts coming from the macerator it goes into post macerate. And what we're going to do is we're going to set all of these to channel red. Extract is always active. Every single one of these top ones, I mean. Um, not the memory chest, just the uh, the buffer chest. So all of these are going to be extract red. And then what we're going to do is um, after it comes out through the post macerate, and we're going to say all of these, by the way, these are going to be insert red. 
So I need to set all that. So all the memory chests are insert red. Which actually I'm going to set the ores to never active for just a minute. Because otherwise, I mean, there's nothing in here, but, uh, I mean, there's no space in here, but still, just in case I do unlock something, I don't want it to go in there. Okay, so all of those are set. And then what we need to do, so the stuff has come from the macerator and it's got deposited here, and then this is pulling out on red. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to find our next line, which is the uh, the two, uh, or I'm sorry, two wash would be the next one that we'd probably set up. And so we're going to say that this one can insert on the blue line. And yeah, that should be good. And so we're going to come over here and we're going to say that all of these ore washers, they can insert on blue. And they're going to be able to extract on purple. Always active. Okay, so the stuff's getting sent to the to the two wash and then whenever it gets done washing this is going to be the fourth one over it's going to go into the post washing which will be on the purple line so we'll say that you can insert there so after it gets done it gets deposited there um, red is uh, this one's set up to extract on red no I want it to this one's backwards <laughs> it's supposed to extract on blue insert on red. I messed up a lot of these. Insert, 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 insert. This one's extracting. We don't want that. Okay, I think these are fixed. And actually these two in the middle, the um, dust compression and nugget compression, I don't think these are going to even extract. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn off the extraction on those. Okay, so purple has deposited into the two wash or the post wash chest. So then we're going to set up the uh, what what the macerator. Macerator comes next. The post the two macerate number two. And so what we'll do is we'll say that the two macerate number two, it's going to extract on cyan, always active, and it's going to insert on light gray. And then we'll pop over here. This macerator, you're going to insert on cyan, you're going to extract on light gray, always active. And so that would be stuff going into the post macerate number two. And so then the next step is centrifuging, which would be this one right over here. And so we're going to say that the centrifuge line, um, this is the two centrifuges, it's post centrifuge. So we're going to say that you extract on gray, always active. And then you're going to insert on pink. Okay. And you can see we're basically just cycling through the channels. So everything goes into a place before and after it goes through a machine. Um, the centrifuge. Okay. So you're going to insert on gray. You're going to extract on pink. There we go. And then lastly, the electric furnace. So the stuff has gone through, and now it's going to the two smelt chest. And we'll also have a thing here for the autoclave systems and the blast furnace systems, but it's going to be set up the same way. You guys will have a general idea uh, of what we're doing after this. So um, on this one, we're going to say you extract on the lime channel, always active. And then it's going to get inserted here on the lime channel. And then what we would do is we would set this to say black and we'll say extract is always active. Black is going to be the deposit this into the system because it's done. There should be nothing. I don't know of anything that's going to go through the electric blast furnace and still have more processing after that. If that comes up, we'll make some adjustment, but actually I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to do that <laughs> because that would be kind of strange. So the black line would basically, it would send it over and, uh, you know, we would have a chest setting, say, right over here. And I'll just set up, um, well, I don't know. Uh, we'll have a chest setting there for right now. And we'll say that you can insert on black. And you won't extract. Okay, so this is where, like, finished product stuff goes. And then it would get pulled out here, um, you know, into, let's see. We'll run, uh, like, metals first. So we'll say this gets extracted on the black line as well. 
since that's the way the conduits are set up. So you can extract on black. Okay. And then in addition, anything that gets stored that comes out of the autoclave or the blast furnace or maybe gets stored as a dust, it would get sent over there as well. So what we might do is have a, um, we might, if we have anything come out as a dust once this is all said and done, which I'm sure we will, we'll have sulfur and I don't know, some other stuff. What, I'm, what I'll probably end up doing is having a, um, I'll have like one more memory chest. Once this one's cleared out, I'll have one that's like two storage. Okay, and that'll be basically once it's done, it's going to get pulled out on the black line and it's going to get pulled in from the, probably the red channel. Because red channel is our general, this is leaving the machine extraction. These top chests are just a buffer. That's all they are. They're not really there for logistical purposes. They're just as a dedicated buffer to that machine. So if something does back up, I can look and say, okay, this is where it's backing up and I can make fixes. Um, nothing gets deposited into these outside of what's coming from the machines. So, and nothing gets deposited from the ore right now, but it will long term. Okay, so that stuff's in place. So now, if I was to take, um, I gotta get used to my ore being over here. Um, I tell you what, I'm gonna go mine up a little bit of iron stuff. Um, I will be, oh, and actually we need to go ahead and set up this other part, and I'm gonna have to test it, but, um, well, we'll set that up in just a second, actually. Let me go mine up, because I don't have any more iron stuff. And that's actually what I would like to run through this initially. So let me go mine up. Um, I got my iron vein over here marked. Let me go mine up a little bit. And I should have dumped off my inventory, but I've got enough space. I don't need a ton of stuff. Because once this is up and running, I'm about to do some heavy mining. It's been a while since I've really done heavy mining. Because um, we mined up so much and I had like thousands of all the metals for a while. And I'm finally running out, which I'm kind of excited. So, because the only thing I've really been heavy mining is like quartz and some nether stuff and I've mined up a bit of aluminum. It's actually super, super easy though with the atomic disassembler, but, but I'll be back here in just a second uh, once I get just a little bit of stuff mined for us to test. Okay, so I got a few metals and I'm just going to grab one of each of these for right now. Uh, brown limonite. I'm just going to grab one of each of these for right now. And the reason being, it's actually easier if you just start with one, get your stuff set up with the system because it is, it does have a lot of filtering that you have to manually do. But once you get it set up, you only have to do it one time, right? So what we're going to do is um, in the two macerate number one chest, we're going to set this to private so it doesn't, uh, nothing gets pulled out of there and we're just going to unlock uh, whoops, four slots here, and we're going to drop in brown limonite, banded iron, yellow limonite, and malachite. And we're just going to lock these back in, and then we're going to unlock it. So we should see that stuff's getting pulled out, and you can see it's going into the macerator, and it's getting broken down, and we're going to get some byproducts. We did get some stone dust, and then that's going to go over here to the post macerate number one chest. So you can see we've got some crushed banded iron ore, we got stone dust, we got crushed brown limonite, we got crushed yellow limonite, and then we'll get that crushed malachite. Now the stone dust, I'm just going to leave that there for right now. What we're probably going to do is actually just send that to a trash can. Oh, and we got a byproduct. The copper dust, this can come from crushing malachite. Um, there is a 14% chance that you're going to get copper as a byproduct. And also some of these, like if you look at the crushed yellow limonite, you're going to get a 67% chance to get stone dust. You have a 14% chance to get nickel. So you will get some second. It's going to be very, very noticeable when you're running lots and lots of stuff. Okay. So that stuff's got sent to there. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the copper dust. And I'm going to set this to the two smelt chest. We're going to set this to private. We're going to unlock that slot, place that in, lock it, and set it back to public. So what's going to happen is that's going to get sent over to the advanced electric furnace, gets the copper ingot, the copper ingot's going to get pulled out, and it goes over here, which then gets sent over to the system. So that part's all working. It's just basically a matter of getting all the filters set. So the post macerate, all of these four materials, and like I said, the stone dust, I mean, honestly, this cache is almost filled up. I mean, I guess I could send it over. There's really not a whole lot you use this for, at least right now. 
making concrete. What I'll probably do is have this sent over. Yeah, I'll set something up for that in just a second, actually. Um, okay, so we've got these four. So these need to get washed now. So we'll just pop over to the two wash chest and we're gonna go ahead, unlock four slots and drop that in, that in, that in, that in, and then lock it back. And if we come up to the post macerate one and we drop this back in, it's gonna start getting pulled out and sent over. Oh, I didn't lock it, whoops, okay. Let me grab, I think it was malachite that got sent there and the stone dust got sent over. There's the malachite. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so the two wash, oh, that's purified malachite, crushed brown limonite. Okay, I need to lock these back in because I messed up there. Got to make sure you do that part. And so that stuff's going to start getting pulled out. This actually goes in the post macerate. This stuff goes in the post wash. So purified malachite and tiny piles of copper. Um, and you can see a lot of stone dust coming from that as well. And actually one thing I need to do is uh, the two do thing chest, I'm gonna set this to round robin enabled. So that if it needs, if it wants to round robin to like different ore washers and stuff, it's able to. So we'll do that. Okay, so the post wash, this is all the stuff that's came from washing. That, uh, those four ores, it's still, running a few things through, but um, that doesn't need to be in there. That's already purified. That's crushed. Okay. Yeah. Got to make sure and lock those back in, otherwise bad things happen. Um, okay, so that's all the stuff that has come from... Okay, I messed up. There was a purified banded iron ore there. Okay, so now it shouldn't get pulled out. You'll notice really, really quick, if, if your stuff's wrong, it's going to send it to wrong places. Okay, so that's the four things that came, or that's the things that came from those four ores. We got six purified banded iron ore, eight purified brown limonite, ten purified malachite, eight purified yellow limonite, lots of tiny piles of dust. Um, okay, so then what we're going to do, let's grab these four ores first. And these are going to go to the, now that they've been washed, they need to get macerated again. So what we're going to do is the two macerate number two chest. We are going to set this to private and we're going to unlock those four slots and drop in these purified metals just like that and then make sure and lock them back. There we go. And that can start macerating. And um, I am going to have to, the two wash, I'm missing one of those. I'll find out whenever I start running the metals, but um, I'll have to add that back in since I messed up, I dirt <laughs> basically. Um, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to set up another macerator here because this macerator, since we're not using the forge hammer, which is faster, it's gonna kind of slow everything down being right there. And then the, the post washing, uh, the stone dust I'm gonna leave there for right now. But these things right here, these four bits of dust, the dust compression, let's go ahead and set this to private and let's throw these four into there. We'll deal with those in just a second. Okay, so the macerator's running. I might have to cut for a second and let this thing finish up, but um, we can see that the post macerate number two, all this stuff is coming in here. And there is byproducts. You can see we got brown limonite dust, we got banded iron dust and that's coming in as byproducts. That's a lot of the reason I wanted to go with this system because adding the byproducts from the macerator and this macerator is kind of huge because they pretty much make dust that it's a lower percent chance you know it's not 100 percent chance but it pretty much makes full dust that go in and they get smelted immediately um, many much of the time making just straight up ingots whenever it does it so uh, it's kind of important that we get that uh, give that space to uh, do its thing okay so now what we're going to do let's grab all of these things for right now First and foremost, some of this stuff's gonna just go in and get smelted. So yellow limonite, just get smelted. Banded iron, just get smelted. Um, brown limonite, just get smelted. Okay, and then we'll lock these back in and let it resume. Now these other four, they need to get centrifuge. So we're gonna go to the two centrifuge chest 
and lock that. Release those four slots and then lock them right back. And there we go. And yeah, that's good. And then this stuff should be going to the centrifuge. It is, and it's making more junk for us. <laughs> and if we take a look at the post centrifuge, here we go. Now we've got malachite, we've got yellow limonite. This stuff's already going because it knows that it can already go here, since that's already locked in. It gets easier the more stuff you get locked in, the more you find that your byproducts are already being sent where they need to go. So that's kind of nice. So um, this stuff here, post centrifuge, let's grab the brown limonite, the yellow limonite, and the malachite. The malachite's going to go into the two smelt right there. And then the dust compression is going to get these other two. Post centrifuge, I think it's ran through everything. Yes. Okay. So everything everything is handled except for the dust compression now. And then, of course, the nugget compression. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. I totally, I totally derped right there. Uh, yeah. So whenever we smelt stuff, we are going to get nuggets in a lot of cases. So what we are going to have to do is set up another chest here for outputs. Um, give me just a second to pull all this stuff out of here real quick. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this to, say, the white channel instead on the output. So the smelter pulls out on the black. We're going to grab this memory chest, which I have emptied into dust compression. We're going to grab this. We're going to plop it down um, say right, let me actually drop a conduit right here, which also means I can drop that another layer. We're going to drop this right there. We're going to call this one output number one. And what we'll do is the stone dust, we're going to go ahead and, oh, i got to lock all this up actually this one we're gonna put stone dust there because it just goes straight into the output also ingots whenever they're done um, the smelter won't fade directly to the output now the nugget compression I think will because I don't think there's anything the dust compression won't but the nugget compression will because there shouldn't be anything that's coming from the from the nugget compression that needs to get processed anymore. So we'll go ahead and say that you can insert and then what we're going to do is we're going to extract on the white channel. Always active and insert. Okay so all the stone dust should be getting pumped over to here. There it goes and then it should immediately be, uh, be getting pulled out. No because this is different inputs I think. Yeah that's like cyan. Okay well let me change this to black inserts. Okay, so now the stone dust is getting pulled out and so will the netherrack dust. And then we'll, I need to set up a trash can. I wasn't setting up a trash can until that got filled up. So um, the dust compression and the nugget compression. Um, the nuggets should get sent over here because they'll get sent to the, oh, I don't have a post smelt chest. I'm going to need one of those. So this will be right here. We're going to say that you can Extract on red, you can insert on black. So then stuff that comes from the smelter should get sent to there, and that's just like another general uh, chest. I'll make a sign here in a minute that's post-smelt for that. But then uh, the smelter would have sent it this stuff, and then that stuff gets pulled out to the nugget compression chest. And it's kind of like a buffer for that. And I know this episode's running a little bit over, um, but that's okay. We're going to power through because we're just about done. Um, I get this set up. I, I know I spent a little bit at the beginning of this episode doing like miscellaneous type stuff. So that's okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set up our arcane crafters. One underneath dust compression. One underneath nugget compression. So one goes right there. And we're going to have a chest underneath it. And hopefully it is working. Awesome. And then dust compression. I was thinking it should work from the memory chest. Um, and this is going to get pulled in. Oh, I still have this set to private. Make that public. There we go. And there we go. You can see we got iron ingots and copper ingots. And then over here we're making dust of various kinds. Okay, so then what we can do is 
And this is pretty much the very last thing we need to do is add a couple conduits here, here, and I can really just link them up like that. Um, we're going to have, this one is going to be dust compression. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set this to extract on red, always active. And we should see this stuff getting pulled out and it should be going just directly into the smelter. There we go. And it's making, you know, different stuff. And then, um, which actually this stuff's probably going into post smelt. It is. And then what we'll do is the copper ingots and stuff like that are going to go into output one. So it can send copper ingots through that. That means it's done. And then this other stuff that's piling up in here, which actually nickel dust needs to be sent to the two smelt chest. And that's going to go into the post smelt. And then it can get locked in. And then this one here, it just needs to pull out because this is coming, this is bringing out all this stuff. We're just going to say that you extract on white, always active. So that stuff should be getting sent over here and getting sent into our storage. And that's really all there is to it. Now it's just a process of adding more ores, whitelisting those ores, and letting it do letting it do its thing. There shouldn't be once this is all set up properly, unless I make a per, like a mistake on my part, there should be no chance for this to back up. And if it does back up, especially once I turn these into diamond chests. There's going to be a huge buffer there available so that if it does start to back up and, you know, I get on three or four hours after it starts backing up, I can check this and go, oh, okay, well, there's a problem and here's the problem and it's easy to troubleshoot if that does come up. But, um, yeah, it's basically just a combination of buffer chests and memory chests for filtering everything out. Uh, and we should be, I didn't see anything in any of the post chests. All of these are emptied out. Good. And so then all I have to do to have this system up and running now is extract always active. And so anything that can get pulled out of there should get pulled out and go to the two macerate chests. You can see stuff's getting dropped into there. And um, I'm probably going to want speed upgrades for the extraction there long term. But you can see it's starting to macerate things. Stuff's getting processed. There goes some ore washing. We should see some stuff getting macerated here in a second. It is a bit quicker to ore wash stuff now, which is awesome to see. And then stuff goes in the macerator. That's running. There's some probably some uh, dust that some dust byproducts that came through that got smelted, and everything's running. And then if we look over here, yeah, there was something that just got pulled out. Awesome, awesome stuff. Now there is going to be one thing that's going to come through from post maceration. Uh, yeah, it's not that. There is one thing that this is missing because I got a purified one in there and I forgot to lock it, uh, which was my fault. But <laughs> um, So I'll get that whenever it comes through and then I'll, I'll run some more materials through this. So, But yeah, and then we can just, we can basically just add a filter. Um, and if we need another output chest, we can. It's not a problem because these are all going to be filtered through so we can just add another one that's not a big issue because we probably will need a second output because there's a lot of things that'll be pu getting pulled from this and if we need more dust compression or nugget compression or any of this stuff it's easy to set up another chest with the same uh, channel colors and be good to go so um, but yeah so I'm going to end out this episode I know it's I know it's well past wrapping up point so I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, between episodes, I will get this blast furnace moved over. Next episode, we're going to be kind of tackling a couple miscellaneous things. Um, I know we're going to get the builder set up so I can start clearing out the blood magic area. We're going to get the blast furnace upgraded because um, I should be able to mine up some zinc and get some chrome, no problem, um, to get that last little bit of canthal that I need. And... Uh, yeah, and then we'll do, I don't know what else. We'll do some other stuff, maybe some automation or something. Like I said, we're kind of working up to where we can do the fluid storage. It's just I don't have the infrastructure there that I need, the automation there, the materials there, all that stuff that I really, really need um, to do that properly. And I don't really want to do a temporary setup because we're kind of past the point, I think, of a lot of our temporary setups, um, aside from putting maybe, you know, a fluid trash can temporarily until we get fluid storage, things like that. But I don't want to do a big fluid storage system that's going to change because we just need the infrastructure there for the parts that we need. So, 
Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. Um, also, that Steam thing behind me, if it's bugging you, that's going to be gone because um, the Blast Furnace is going to go right in there, but uh, that'll be gone between episodes. So, yay. <laughs> but anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.